While many nations during the French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars fought both with and against the French at one time or another, with varying levels of commitment, the situations surrounding the many states that made up the Confederation of the Rhine are a bit more complex than others. The complicated nature of the many German states and their relations with each other was, put simply, a mess. Just taking a look at a map of the now mostly defunct Holy Roman Empire gives a pretty good idea about how complicated interactions with states could be. In general, however, the German states can be divided into three main groups, Austria, Prussia, and everybody else. Austria and its empire was the more traditional great power among the German states, and made use of that power constantly, often putting it at odds with the smaller surrounding states. Prussia, meanwhile, was a much newer power that likewise exercised its influence over the other German states. Its militaristic nature did not make it many friends amongst its much weaker neighbors. Finally, there are the various other German states of vastly varying importance and power, from the smallest independent city to the larger states such as Bavaria. They had varying interests, but one thing they mostly all had in common was that they could not stand up to Austria or Prussia alone without support. As a consequence, they often found themselves seeking allies from one of the two great German powers or elsewhere. Napoleonic France and its success offered an appealing third option, at least at first. Back in 1792, revolutionary France effectively annexed almost all the land on the west side of the Rhine River, though it would not be officially recognized until 1798. Much of that land, however, was owned by states that still existed on the other side of the river. The annexation of so much land on the west side of the Rhine started a discussion of compensation for land loss that would grow rapidly in both size and complexity. While France clearly had the leading role in events, Austria, Prussia, and even Russia also either influenced events or gained some form of compensation as well. It would be the states who had the best connections, strategic positioning, and sometimes best bribes that benefited the most, however. When all was said and done, the compensation and consolidation of states put an end to the ecclesiastical principalities, free imperial cities, and most of the free imperial knights and counts. Though the latter was more a part of an unofficial feeding frenzy that was only halted for a time by Austria in 1804, far too late to save most from annexation. In 1806, the number of states would be further reduced as Napoleon created the Confederation of the Rhine. Consisting of 16 states at its founding, the Confederation was mostly a buffer for France against invasion, with all member states being in a military alliance with France. More states would be added as the Confederation reached its peak size in 1808 with 36 members. There were four kingdoms, five grand duchies, 13 duchies, and a number of principalities. Initially, the creation of the Confederation of the Rhine was a benefit to both sides. France got a buffer state, and Napoleon had a new source of soldiers and supplies for his wars. For the various German states, they received land from their surrounding neighbors as they were consolidated, along with higher titles for some. France being the dominant power of the time was also a big motivator for throwing in their lot with Napoleon. Better to be on the winning side than be in an uneasy alliance with time-tested, unreliable neighbors, even if Napoleon essentially forced them into a satellite state. The good times were short-lived for the members of the Confederation, however. Napoleonic France was constantly at war, so the states of the Confederation were required to constantly send troops to fight. As the years passed, there was a constant bleed on each of the nation's resources and manpower, without any real benefits for the members of the Confederation. Napoleon's introduction of the Continental System further hurt the Confederation like it did to most of Europe. Smuggling was so bad that Napoleon annexed part of the Confederation into France to try and better control trade in 1810. Relations between various members of the Confederation and France was slowly deteriorating, but the invasion of Russia in 1812 would be a clear sign to the Confederation that French domination over Europe was coming to an end. Tens of thousands of men from the Confederation were sent into Russia as part of Napoleon's invasion force. Very few would return alive, further putting strain on the military capability of the Confederation. As the walls closed in on Napoleon's empire, he gathered as many troops from wherever he could, including from the now very unwilling members of the Confederation of the Rhine. The members of the Confederation, however, had no desire to go down with what they viewed as a sinking ship, so they began switching sides when it became clear that France had lost and Napoleon would not have victory. Even going so far as defecting in the middle of battle in the case of the Saxons during the climatic Battle of Leipzig. After the end of the Napoleonic Wars, the Confederation of the Rhine was broken up, with the land once again being redistributed. Some countries would disappear from the map, while others would return. Overall, however, there were vastly fewer states than when the French Revolution began, with the map looking slightly less messy. After Napoleon's final defeat in 1815, a new confederation would be created during the Congress of Vienna 
including roughly the same area as the previous Holy Roman Empire. The impact of the creation of the Confederation of the Rhine on further German unification was significant, as the mess of jumbled states had been significantly reduced. It would turn into a key step in the long process that would eventually end up as the United Germany.